Hello, <clears throat> we're back. And again, if y'all remember, we are in John, 1 John, chapter 2. We got through the first two verses the last time because of the atonement. If you remember, that is like the the thing about Christianity is, is the atonement. It, uh, and for all of you that don't uh, know, uh, the atonement is... Uh, Christ going to the cross. I mean, that that is what we believe as Christians, that he on that cross he suffered uh, and paid the penalty for our sins so that we could be right with God. You know, that the great exchange. We talked about that the last time. Um, so I want to just jump right into this as fast as possible because uh, 1 John chapter 2 is uh, big. Uh, the second chapter is really, really big. And we only got through two verses the last time we went to Romans but we only got through two verses here in John and it took us an hour and a half it took me an hour and a half and f for y'all who um, are interested in this that's so cool if, if you stuck around and watched that video uh, I, I would say yeah check it out it's um, there are parts in there that uh, you might look at and go okay where's he going with this but I eventually do get to that <laughs> uh, the point uh, at, you know toward the end there but Okay, so uh, I want to make this, hopefully this will be much quicker, I'll try to make this like a 30 minute video, so let's get right into it. Uh, oh, what's new? What's new? Uh, the Bible. So uh, the Bible that I have is an NASB, New American Standard Bible, 2020 version. So this is really only the revised version of the NASB. Uh, they do a pretty good job with this. I would say it's it's pretty accurate to the word for word of the original transmitted text that we have in the Greek. Um, it's pretty accurate as far as that goes. I would say maybe even the 1995 version of the NASB uh, is more word for word accurate. Uh, this they really pull from all different areas. They use the Dead Sea Scrolls. They use uh, the Greek when uh, needed and necessary and. Uh, they they use the the more uh, to the beginning dates of uh, you know what is what is the uh, most uh, recent from Christ's death uh, that was written and so they take those ones and and, and put them in here the, the major change with this one which critics uh, really kind of um, jump on is instead of just brethren they put brothers and sisters. The reason I mention that and the reason I'm using this Bible, uh, for one, I usually start these videos with, hey, what's new? Um, but also is that in this chapter, it, you'll hear that. You'll, 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 you will hear brothers and sisters. And the and sisters is italicized. So it's, um, it's in the text, but it also says, hey, this isn't uh, perfectly original uh, from the Greek. The Greek would, would say brothers or brethren. Um, but in all context would mean brothers and sisters. And so you, you'll look at some of the, uh, like the New King James Version, it just says brothers or brethren. Um, and so people get offended by that. And they, they say, oh, well, the, the new um, versions are just trying to conform to um, today's standards of, you know, oh, it has to be brothers and sisters talking about the church. So there, there's obviously sisters in that church. And so, uh, it, it, it can get very convoluted and it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to point that out because that's what you'll hear here. So, all right. So, First uh, John chapter 2, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. So, again, we went over that before we were talking about that, where the whole world, um, not for our sins only, but for our, uh, the sins of the whole world, we were talking about, uh, we went into the Greek. So we went into the Greek and it literally means the whole world. So uh, not not to get too far into that and reiterate too much. Uh, the, the whole world there though in the Greek, you can uh, look at that again and I'll, I'll put it here, but it, uh, you can interpret that throughout the entire cosmos. And so again, Calvinists would hate that, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, because they believe in a particular atonement or a limited atonement. Um, and uh, in the way it's interpreted, I, I think many 
denominations and, and other churches will kind of twist that and say, oh, well, look, the atonement is for everyone. The universalists would hate that uh, uh, or, or love this. I'm sorry. The universalists would love this and say, look, everyone's saved. Uh, which, if you watch the last video, you'll understand that that, that was completely debunked as far as uh, universalism. It doesn't doesn't work. Some people are going to go to hell. Uh, and scripture's clear about that. But um, So, okay, so n not for our sins only, but uh, for the sins throughout the cosmos is what that says in Greek, basically. Um, so, by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. How do you know that you've come to know him? Remember, we started this video series in John, the latter part of this epistle. He says, this is how you know. This is how you know. Uh, and, and there's kind of a series of, um, not again, not tests, but uh, there's a series of, you know, uh, uh, evidences in a, in, a, in a Christian's life. He says, uh, all throughout his epistle, he says it, Here's, here's one thing, here's the other. He says, if you're this thing, um, you're a liar if you say that you're this thing. And, and there's evidence that you're not, right? So uh, this entire epistle, the whole thing's like that. It, you will see that. There's a contrast, this or that, this or that. And if he's saying you're one thing and you're behaving in another way, he's saying you're a liar. So, um, and, and you'll see that. So by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. So how do you know that you've come to know him? And in other scripture, it says uh, not, you know, uh, that we knew him, but that he knew us, uh, that he knows us, right? Um, yeah. So by this, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. So what does that mean? Like the 613 commandments in the Old Testament? Um, again, if you watch the other video, you understand that you're not under the Levitical priesthood and that um, no law was given to Judah and uh, in Hebrews there. So um, no law was given to Judah. You're not under the Levitical priesthood. Uh, if, you're, if you're a born again Christian uh, believer, and again, I have to make that distinction because there are a lot of people that say they believe and they live like a demon. And John would rebuke you and say, no, you're not who you say you are, you're a liar. Uh, but if, if you have the spirit of God dwelling in you, then yes, so, yeah. <laughs> you're born again and so uh, he, he's talking about that um, if we say that we have come to know him and if we keep his commandments so uh, we have, we have come to know him we know that we have if we keep if we keep his commandments that's what he's saying you can't mistake that you can't mistake that for anything else that's what he's saying right here um, but again is, is it the 613 no it's not um, is it uh, the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament delivered to Moses by angels I, I wouldn't say necessarily, because uh, we have that we have that conviction in us already. Um, it, it, he says, um, you know, I'll, I'll write my commands and laws on their heart, and I believe he's talking about Judah and Israel. And some people would refute that and say, no, he's only talking about Israel, the the Old Testament Jews. But he says Judah. He says Judah too. So, uh, and and we know that uh, Jesus came from the line of Judah and that uh, no command or law was given uh, to, to Judah, uh, but the, the Levites and the Mosaic law were, uh, you know, those commands in the Old Testament. And so G Jesus is the new lawgiver. I mean, he's, he's the lawgiver for anybody who's born again and of, of, of his line as well. Um, so he's the firstborn of all creation. Um, he, you know, uh, he, he is, he leads the way, the first fruit. I mean, he's the, the, the new, the new birth. Um, anybody born of him is of that line. And so Jesus gives you those commands. He, he gets, so God, God says, hear him, hear him. Um, this is my beloved son, hear him. He, he's the one that, you know, he gives, he gives the commands. He's, he's the one who gives the law. He's the one who is the priest who atones for your sins. Uh, so in his own life's blood uh, and so uh, he says keep his commandments um, if if we keep his commandments we have we we come we know that we've come to know him if we keep his commandments uh, in other verses it talks about uh, the Pharisees they're like you know we, we're of Abraham we're of Abraham 
uh, in, in Moses and in, in, in them. And, and Jesus rebukes them and says, if you were of Abraham, if you were Abraham's children, if you were his descendants, you would do the things of Abraham. You would do those things. So if, if you're of uh, Jesus, like many claim, uh, you, you will do those things. You will do those things. Uh, it's just how it is. It's just how it goes. Um, again, not sinless perfection. I have to keep reiterating that because a lot of people that take this message as works-based salvation, but it's not true. Uh, you know, uh, it's not like you're working your way. I got to keep all those commandments. I got to keep it. Uh, and it's not. I don't think that's what John's saying. Um, it, it doesn't happen that way. You don't have to clean yourself up beforehand. But the Holy Spirit comes in first, changes you, um, and it's a joy. I mean, it's a revitalizing joy to, to have this, the Spirit of God dwelling in you. You don't have to worry about your sin and shame and guilt and all that stuff that's a, a literally oppressing you, causing just ah, all this stuff, depression, anxiety, uh, just all of that. Ugh. And then the Spirit of God comes in, changes that, gets rid of that, right? Throws it off your back and says, you know, put this robe on. I'm going to make you new. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, right? It's not a begrudging thing to where it's like, you have to do this now. It's like, no, I want to do that. I want to do that. Um, so he says, uh, by this we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. You know that you know him if you keep his commandments. And again, it's not all of the Old Testament commandments. It's not necessarily the Ten Commandments. It's what Jesus says. If Jesus says to do something, and you're not doing it, you don't know him, is what it's saying. So you have to understand that. You cannot miss that. This is These are vital truths, and John is going to contrast them starkly. So, um, uh, yeah, so doing what Jesus says. He, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Um, so... Yeah, it's it's pretty cut and dry. John is like that. He's cut and dry. He's like black and white. He's like, you know, if you're doing this, you're wrong. <laughs> so, uh, but again, it's not a begrudging thing, and I ain't judging. I'm I'm just trying to point out the the, the truth of the matter because you will you won't get this anywhere else. Um, well, I'm not saying I'm the arbiter of truth, but uh, as far as scripture goes, scripture will testify to it, and uh, not me. Uh, uh, but you won't get this in like your your common churches uh today's message at my church was, whew, was I, I felt like i was just whew, it was amazing uh you know i was both convicted and encouraged it was a strange dynamic i was, I was like wow just set my head spinning and i was like wow that was amazing um the whole time i was like amen amen just in my head i'm like yeah uh so uh, you know again I, somebody's preaching from the scripture it's it's almost you know i mean you can't help but just be excited about it if you know anyway um uh let's see uh so uh verse four we've only gotten to verse four the one who says i have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him so there he says it he says it so if <laughs> so by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments it's like oh okay well you know, I'll try, but that's not the point of the message. It, it's not to try. It's that the Holy Spirit of God comes in, changes a person supernaturally, and, and then they go out. It's a supernatural thing. It's not It's not a human-based religion. It's not a, you know, it's not just a, a man thing to where it's like, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. You know, I'm going to put my whole whole effort into this. It's not how it is at all. It's uh, the, the opposite of that. Christianity is completely different, I, I think, than any other religion because it's not working your way to, to salvation. And a lot of people who take that as a license to do whatever they want will twist that up and, and say, look, you know, uh, no, Jesus does it. You can live however you want. Uh, this this life doesn't matter. It's it's all heavenly. And so that's just not true. It's not true based on what he says. Uh, and he says it per very harshly as well so that there's no deception. So you, you can't mistake this. It says, the one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So that's, again, I, I've, heard, I've heard people say, um, you know, this is just a carnal Christian. Somebody who's saved, they're saved, and uh, they just need to know it. 
They just need to, you know, uh, that they're saved and that, oh, sure, they're a liar, but they're saved. And, um, you know, um, I don't know. I, and I've, I've, I've heard this on, on all of the things that he's going to go through. It's like, oh, yeah, they're a carnal Christian. They just need to abide. They're a carnal Christian. Um, they just need to know him deeper in a relationship. They're a carnal Christian, and they just need to, you know, whatever he, he is saying when he says you're a liar and the truth is not in you, <laughs> they're, they're saying, oh, no, that's just very light-handed, and it's it, they're, they're a Christian, and they just need to, they need to figure it out. You know, they need to stop the devil from bothering them. That's not what he's saying. And you have to understand this. It's all right here. You don't even have to look at the Greek. I mean, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. And when you do look at the Greek, it's even harsher. Um, so he's, he says, The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And so, you know, where I think he's going with all of this is what I think... Uh, why he's documenting this? Well, there's, there's many different reasons. In the first century, there was Gnostics in, 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 in the area, and they were um, uh, saying that Jesus did not come in the flesh, that it was just all spiritual stuff, and that Jesus wasn't a, a man, and, and, and all of that. And, and so, but I, I think it goes way deeper than that, way, way deeper than that. And, and I think there were, there were other people, not just Gnostics, coming into the church and, and, and uh, saying all kinds of just weird things stuff and, and he wanted to make it very 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 clear that you cannot mistake it um, and and he's not saying that these are saved born again Christians who um, are saying one thing out of one side of their mouth and doing another uh, you can't you can't have that as uh, I mean and again there will be kind of a one-off every every so often I'm you know I, I, I can attest to that in my life and I think I have the spirit um, uh, because of, uh, not because of myself and not, not because I'm, well, you know, I'm better than somebody else. I'm not, I'm not, we're all under sin. We all are, uh, and we're, we're all going to mess up and, and slip up. Um, but you know, a after the spirit, you will be convicted over that sin and, and it will test you and try you. And if you continue in that sin, it will break you. Um, you're, you're not going to be happy, <laughs> you know? If you keep his commandments, you'll be super happy. It's like it's like a child um, getting disciplined. Uh, it, if if uh, it, it doesn't feel great at first, that doesn't feel good at all. But it keeps you from running in the road and getting ran over. Um, it keeps you from dying, right? Uh, and so that discipline, that grieving of the Holy Spirit, uh, keeps you from death. Uh, now, if if you continue in that way, that's a great evidence that you've never been saved in the first place that it was a very deceptive work of the flesh, and that maybe even some preacher uh, came and pronounced salvation over you, and now you think you're saved. Um, I've seen it. I've, I see it all the time, actually. Uh, that type of stuff happens uh, every single day, uh, where somebody, you know, in a greater authority over somebody else will say, no, you're just saved, and you need to stop the devil from bothering you. Mm, no. Uh, that, what that uh, young man or woman needs uh, or old man and woman, but maybe even young in the faith, uh, they need discipleship. They need somebody to, to come alongside them and, and give them scripture and say, hey, you know, uh, this is what scripture says. Um, I'm, I have no power of my own, <laughs> you know, to, to say, yeah, you're saved, you're saved, you know, and you can live however you want now uh, because that's what they want. They want that license. I know because I was there. I was there uh, late 2009. Um, I thought I was saved because I had this uh, religious experience, and uh, it was, uh, well, the end of that was my second prevented attempt at suicide. Uh, so I obviously was not saved. I, didn't, I you know, I wasn't obeying the, the commands of God, and I was living however I wanted to, and I had that religious experience, and uh, I was told I was saved and all of that. And the, the reason I know that I wasn't saved was because when I got saved, when the Holy Spirit of God came in and changed me, um, that was supernatural. Like, you will never, ever experience anything like that on, on this planet, um, internally, externally, uh, until it happens. And then you're like, yeah, okay. Even if the whole world got together, all of the religious leaders, everybody, and told me I wasn't saved, I would have the greatest confidence that my Lord has saved me. The love of God was shed abroad in my heart. All right? So... So you'll know, uh, you, you will know, um, and, and sometimes it's, it's not that dramatic. I mean, it, it was very dramatic for me because I went from 
heathen, gonna kill myself, to uh, change born again believer just on fire for God. Um, for some, it's it's gradual, but there will be that moment. There will be the uh, you know kind of that mm, I can't I can't run from God. I can't escape this. I can't hold on to my myself so tightly anymore. I have to surrender. I gotta let go. And uh, the things that you once hated will be the things that you now love. I mean, I, I hated his commandments. I hated them. And I didn't even know what they were. I just knew that uh, some guy uh, on the street who was smoking pot was like, you know, oh, they're oppressive, those commandments, those religious things, that, you know, those Christians, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then that thought was in my head, and I had no idea what it even meant. And the commandments are amazing. It's like, uh, love God. It's like, oh, I hate that. It's like, uh, you know, well, okay. Uh, what's the what's the second greatest commandment? He says, love your neighbor as yourself. It's like, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Those are good things. Those are good things. What's wrong with that? Loving your neighbor as yourself? We're talking about this every single day on Facebook. It's like, oh, why can't everybody love each other? Love, love, love your neighbor. And then if uh, Christ says it, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> it's a bad thing when it's when it's Christian, I guess. But um, but I get that. I get that. I totally get that. Like, uh, I was on the other side of the fence for a long time, long time, where it's like, you know, oh, they're just judging. They're just judging. And I and I get that because I've been to churches that actually do ju judge and, you know, uh, just really lay into people. And it's like, eh, I don't want anything to do with that. Um, but that has, doesn't have anything to do with scripture either. So, scripture is where it's at. Um, you gotta get in, gotta get into the word. If if you're if you're searching and you're seeking and you're like, okay, what is the deal with this Christian Christ, Christianity? Uh, uh, get into the word of God. Don't don't go to uh, you know uh, somebody who's very well meaning and maybe should spend more time in their Bible than they are preaching. Uh, that that can be very uh, that can be a very hard way to go about it um <clears throat> so and there, there can be many things and test them test test whoever is telling you these things and and look for it in scripture and if you don't find it then it's wrong so uh it doesn't keep his commandments as a liar and the truth is not in him but whoever follows his word in him the love of god has truly been perfected by this we know that we are in him. You can know it. You can know it, and, and he'll tell you that throughout this entire epistle. We know that we're in him if the love of God has been perfected. Uh, if whoever follows his word, whoever follows his word, follows his word. We can look at that in the Greek. Uh, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't put it down here. I don't know. That's a lot of work sometimes, but uh, maybe I'll put it down there, see what follow means. Uh, but, you know, following his word, I, I believe, without looking at the Greek here, it, it literally means like, put, uh, you know, following after, like, you know, following his word. Is it, uh, by following something, is it always easy? Or, or you're going to do it perfectly? Not no, nah, not really, and, and I kind of got an illustration here. I've heard this illustration from somebody else. This isn't my illustration, um, but it, I think it's powerful and impactful. Uh, it's, it's like um, trying to follow uh, your, your, your dad um, in, in maybe a, a harsh territory, uh, even like uh, snow, right? Uh, trying to follow in his footsteps, like literally, so you don't get off off the path you know maybe there's a uh, in, uh, foot of snow and your dad is leading the way right uh, putting his feet into the snow and you try with all of your might you know stretching your legs out to try to get into as a young child trying to get into those footprints so that you don't get off into the harder areas into the into the, uh, the tall snow um, so following after, especially the word, is not going to be an easy thing. It will lead to um, great things. It will lead to amazing things. Uh, but it's not, it's not always easy. Uh, so, and, and it's not always the most joyous, uh, you know, well, you know, it, it doesn't, it, sometimes it brings pain. 
uh, you know, to stretch your legs out and try, you know, I probably look pretty silly doing that, but, uh, but it's, yeah, yeah, so the, the following after the word, uh, I think that's a better way to say as far as uh, his commandments. Um, but whoever follows his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. There's great assurance in this epistle. You can know. The one who says that he remains in him ought himself also walk just as he walked. The other, uh, so in other versions it says abide. And this is another one where people say, yeah, you're, you're a Christian, you just need to abide. You're a Christian, you just need to abide in him. Um, and he makes it very clear in this that if you're not abiding in him, you're a liar. Or you're, you're saying something that like you're saying that you are something and you're not right because that's what lying means is it's you're not telling the truth <laughs> so um so abiding in him uh we know that we abide in him how by saying we're a christian and, and not abiding in him but uh you know hearing from other people that we need to abide in him no 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 uh no it doesn't say that it says, the one who says that he remains or abides in him ought himself also walk just as he walked. So again, that, that whole thing about stretching your legs out and, and, and uh, you know, trying to walk as he walked, right? Abba, Father, our, our God, our Father, um, walking as he walked. And again, if you look at that Greek, I believe this here also when it says walk is the Greek word and it's patipateum or patty potato and it means to conduct yourself how do you conduct yourself how do you live how are you uh, you know what do you what is your life look like and um, you know if you if you say you're doing one thing a, a good test of that is just to, you know if you've got a wife or children or uh, somebody you're around all the time ask them ask that ask them if you're wondering about somebody they're saying one thing and they don't you know you're kind of iffy Ask their wife. Ask their, ask their children. Ask the people that are around them. Is this person who he says he is, who she says they are, you know. Uh, and again, I don't, I don't want to sound harsh. I don't always speak like this, uh, but th this, this is what this epistle calls for. There's a directness here, right? Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, how you conduct yourself, patty pateum. Uh, it means, you know, the style, the style of the, to, you know, how, how you, how you are. Um, so it says, the one who says that he abides in him ought himself also conduct himself just as he conducted himself. You might say, oh, you've gone too far. Like, how, how can anybody conduct themselves like, like Jesus did? It's a, again, it's that same illustration, you know, kind of stretching your legs out, um, really uh, wanting to follow, because there's greater things to come if, uh, you know, if you're doing that, uh, and, and you will want to. There will be a new desire. You will have a new heart with new desires. So, um, it says uh, in verse 7, Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. This this is kind of a mystery for uh, modern day evangelicals. Sometimes I you know I've heard even uh, kind of newer new age not new age but um, um, maybe even the um, up and coming churches. Uh, I've heard this from kind of the newer churches, especially around here in Oregon. I'm not going to name any names. I don't want to call anybody out, but um, uh, they've said, what is he talking about? Like a new commandment, but an old, a new one and an old one. Like what, where's he going with this? Beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have heard from the beginning. So you've, uh, you know, uh, it's, he says, you've heard this from the beginning. And when John starts his gospel, he says, in the beginning was the word. So he emphasizes Jesus. When he's saying uh, from the beginning, he's talking about when Jesus came on the scene and started his preaching. The first words out of Jesus' mouth was, repent and believe. Repent and believe. So turn, 
turn, and that's kind of an old English word, I guess, repent, but it, it uh, means to turn around or change, change, the, change your thinking. Um, and really kind of walking as he walked, uh, that there's kind of a style of life. If, if you just change your behavior, and it's called white knuckling, you're just hanging on for dear life. Uh, and your thoughts may say, well, after this, and, and you, you can get this even in church. I mean, um, the, the message is powerful and you're getting something out of it and you're just white knuckling, hanging onto that pew, <laughs> just trying to change your behavior. And, and then your thoughts are, oh, after this, I wonder where I'm going to go for, for lunch uh, with somebody else. Or, you know, after this, uh, uh, and, and without even the, the word of God has not penetrated. Um, you're just trying to change your behavior. That's, I mean, that, that's not going to help anything. That, you're, it's got to be top down. It's got to be the spirit of God testifying to spiritual. Uh, mentally, uh, if, you're, if your mind is engaged, your body will follow. Um, so. uh, the one who says he remains in him on himself also walk. Just as he walked, beloved, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard. So, um, Jesus said it, and you'll see this in Hebrews, I believe it's Hebrews 6, Hebrews 6, 1, uh, where, where it talks about kind of the, the, the uh, juvenile things, some of those uh, earlier teachings, um, where it talks about uh, repentance from dead works and faith toward God, right? And, and we can get into kind of, you know, we talked about this probably in the first video, from what I remember, uh, what faith is and what it actually means. And, and I'll put some, some Greek down here, uh, um, the verse that talks about what is faith. Um, and we'll get into that in a later video as well, but uh, just, just for the sake of um, continuity, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, so, on the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. So, um, he says God is light at the beginning of this epistle. This is, this is the new, new, thing, new thing that he's talking about. Um, God is love. We knew that. And God is one. Um, there, there is one God. Uh, mono, uh, uh, I forgot how to say it in the Greek. Um, but, uh, oh, well, so monotheism, basically. Uh, so monotheism. Okay, so, uh, yeah, with, with that, um, just to uh, be clear about this, he, he says at the beginning of his epistle, God is light. And remember, we talked about, uh, you know, darkness in, in that sense and light in that sense of darkness being um, esoteric, kind of hidden information. And um, even the Gnostics at, at the time of this were on the scene and they're like, no, we have this hidden information. You've got to join us just so you can know about it. Um, and he's saying, no, God has made it clear. He's made it evident, uh, his will and what he, what he requires of you. And there's, there's no darkness in him. There's no, uh, I mean, he's made it clear. I mean, creation screams God. Creation screams, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty evident. Uh, there, there was a designer. There's, there's, you know, um, so it, it, he's, well, I'm, that's kind of off topic in some ways, but uh, he's saying, you know, God is light. He's made it very clear what he requires. Um, he, there's no darkness in him at all. Um, it's, it's evident. It's evident. And so that's, you know, that's kind of the, the prior commandment, um, uh, old, old commandment, the word, you know, that Jesus preached, right? Um, and then he says, on the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Um, so that's, yeah, the new commandment, new commandment. Um, the one, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we go. Um, so the one who loves his brother and uh, so <laughs> there's the uh, uh, brother and sister part that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So bear with me. Uh, the one who loves his brother and sister remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause stumbling. So remember when we talked about the commandments, it was the the two, the two basically. He says all all of the law and prophets hang on these. Uh, so yeah, law and prophets. So. Um, all of it from the Old Testament. The, there's 613 commandments, basically. We've tallied it up. Uh, so, so all of them 
The law and the prophets hang on these. Love God and love your neighbor. And again, it's, it's not uh, our definition of love. You have to look in Scripture what love really means. I mean, what, what is love and what's the definition of it? Because our definition of love changes uh, with the season. I mean, uh, uh, we could change the definition of love just like that. Uh, but, you know, what, is, what does God say when he means love? So, and we'll get into that too. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, the one who says that he is in the light and yet hates his brother or sister is in the darkness until now. So, new commandment. That's what he's talking about. Um, until now, he, he says. So, this, this is kind of the new, the new one um, in, in some ways. I mean, you can see this in the Old Testament. Jesus talked about this as well. But um, uh, that hates his brother or sister is in the darkness until now. So, uh, you say that you know God. You say that you love God and you hate his representatives on, on, on the planet, on earth, uh, really kind of the closest thing we'll, we, we will know of God um, until, until glory, until we're with him, uh, or until the judgment, until the judgment day when he uh, raises all, and everybody you know, back to life and judges, um, you know, separates the wheat and tares, uh, the goats from the sheep, um, uh, the great day of judgment, right? Um, you know, uh, we will be uh, Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit are the closest we will know of God and and uh, a brother or a sister or even somebody who says I'm Christian uh, hates hates them hates hates Christians um, you don't know God that's what he's saying that's what he's saying um, now can can uh, people come into the church and say that they're Christians and um, you know, uh, try to deceive people and, and really cause a big stir and a stink and, and really mess things up. Paul talks about that. Savage wolves will come in among you and they will not spare the flock. So, yeah. Um, but uh, are we to hate them too? No, I don't think so. Uh, we can hate their works, but um, oh, that's another thing too. It's like, you know, I'm going all different places, but I will hear people say, you know, hate the sin, love the sinner. Hate the sin, love the sinner. Uh, read the Old Testament, uh, where God says he hates the sinner. Um, so, you know, and again, uh, I think that's kind of a, uh, what John is talking about is perpetual sin or making a practice of sin. And can Christians have kind of that one-off or be, or be ensnared by sin sometimes? We can, but we will have greater and greater manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit if the Spirit of God lives in you. It's just a true. That's just true. Um, but if we're living in perpetual sin, we're kind of in the camp to where God says he hates that person uh, because they're, they're practicing sin. They're of the evil one. He talks about the evil one spreading seed, uh, you know, his, his, his seed uh, throughout the, wor the world alongside of the, the good seed um, that the shepherd has spread, right? Our, our, our good shepherd, um, the sower. Um, so, uh, yeah, and some people are going to hell, not, not because God is like, and this is my opinion, not because God is like, um, you know, okay, I'm, you know, I'm just going to send you all to hell, you know, um, there you go, uh, you know, without, without any remorse, just, um, you know, we want to be there. If that's where we're going, we want to be there. I've heard, I've heard it this way that, um, if you went to hell, and God in his graciousness came down and opened the door and said, come on, let's go. You would slam the door in his face and say, I never wanted you to begin with. Because that's what heaven is. It's, it's eternal life with God the Father. And so if you don't want anything to do with him, you'd rather spend, and it ain't fun down there. You know, it's not a spiritual plane you want to be in for eternity. I'll tell you what, you're not going to be partying down there and having beers with your bros. That's not how it works. It's it's, uh, it's a terrifying thing for eternity. You don't want to go there. Um, so the one who says that he is in the light and yet hates his brother or sister is in the darkness until now. The one who loves his brother and sister remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause stumbling. Um, are there things that I don't agree with in the church? I, I talk about that stuff. Do I hate my brothers and sisters there? No, I love them. That's why I keep going. That's why I keep going. Um, because I love them. Um, and, and I think they love me too. Uh, you know, uh, 
it, by the way that they talk to me, by their actions, by the things that they say about me. It's usually, you know, uh, good good stuff. It's not, uh, you know, there's constructive criticism on, you know, probably each side, but it's always done in love. It's, it's never, um, you know, oh, I'm doing this because, you know, you're blah, blah, blah. It, it's always, hey, like, this is what the scripture says. Like, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Um, you know, and so it's it's done in love. Um, it, um, so you can disagree. You can disagree with people. That's fine. <laughs> it doesn't mean you hate them. Um, and, and that even goes for the world. He says, um, you know, um, love your neighbor. And who's your neighbor? It's the it's, uh, closest one to you. When he talks about brothers, loving your brother, that's different. Um, brother is th those born of the spiritual birth, those born of the Holy Spirit of God. That That is your brother and sister in Christ, and so there's kind of a higher standard there. Uh, but he says love your neighbor too, and the, na the neighbor is really just kind of the closest person to you. Um, it, re read the parable of, uh, um, I'll, put it, I'll put it down here, but uh, the Good Samaritan the Good Samaritan. And if, if you know anything about Jewish history uh, and the Samaritans and the Jews, uh, you'll know that there was, there, well, there's more than a distinction there. Uh, there's really kind of a separation. Um, I don't think the Jews thought that Samaritans had anything to do with God at all. And so when Jesus tells that parable, he's saying, who, who you know, basically, who did the will of God? Um, it, was the, it was the Samaritan. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, and, and so there's, there's all different types and kinds, um, but, uh, you know, doing good things is part of it, so, but love your neighbor. Um, let's see, uh, that was a side note. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you on account of his name. So he says, little children, and if you remember the last video, we talked about little children and what that, what that meant. He's not, he's not writing, um, you know, uh, children. He, he's writing to the church, and, and, and uh, I believe he's writing to the elders, because the elders would be the ones speaking this uh, over, over the congregation at the time. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, so he's, uh, I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins have been forgiven you on account of his name. So he's, he's talking to born again, um, probably, you know, uh, children in the faith, right? Children, uh, so people who have just newly, I mean, I'm, I'm eight years into this. Uh, 9 nine thirteen is when everything happened to me. And I remember that date because it was a stark difference. I mean, it was darkness and light, right? Um, overnight, all at once. Um, I, I, I was addicted to substances, like hard substances, like pills. I was into, you know, um, methadone. I was into um, uh, whatever I can get my hands on, basically. And I was drinking every single day. Um, you know, there were times that I would go weeks just drinking straight. And, and when I say drinking straight, I mean like all day and night, um, you know, not, stop, not stopping. Um, so... Uh, and I didn't have any withdrawals or nothing. It was just like amazing. It was chain smoking, chain smoking. I mean, I, I would smoke one every 15 minutes and it takes about five to seven minutes to smoke a cigarette. So I'd be smoking, I'd be smoking, um, you know, two packs of cigarettes a day. Uh, and uh, overnight, overnight conversion, it's a miracle. And it was, um, I didn't have any withdrawal, didn't desire nicotine or cigarettes or anything like that pretty incredible stuff so um, but uh, um, so uh, little children so uh, so eight years now uh, maybe I would consider myself still uh, uh, maybe even a child in the faith I don't think you're a man of God until you reach your 60s um, so uh, I'm still a boy of God um, so I'm writing you little children because your sins have been forgiven you on account of his name we talked about the atonement Sins being forgiven, sins being forgiven on account of his name, uh, his name, his name, Jesus, the one who came in the flesh. Um, if you're believing in a different Jesus, and, and there's tons of different, I mean, and we, I, I think we talked about this in another video, but um, uh, so Jehovah's Witnesses believe in a, a different Jesus. Um, they, they believe totally differently about uh, Jesus. They say he was created. He was the first, uh, you know, first and greatest creation of Jehovah God, is what they'll say. Um, scripture rebukes that and says he wasn't created. And, and there's a slew of verses about that. It says he was not created, that he is the creator. 
um, and, and they'll, they'll rebuke that and they'll say, no, he's the son of God. Um, and uh, tons of verses call him God. Hebrews t talks about, uh, you know, he, he's God. <laughs> and, uh, Jesus says, uh, I think John eight fifty eight, he says, uh, bef before Abraham was, I am. And that I am there is the same I am that was used in the Old Testament when God showed up in the bush, the burning bush, and, and said, I am. He says, what name should I, should I tell them? And he says, I am. <laughs> so uh, the Greek word is ego a me, and it literally means I am. Uh, and so Jesus calls himself God, and then Thomas falls down before him and says, my Lord and my God. He's, he calls him God. Uh, and and Jesus, you know what do the angels do when um, uh, when people fall down and worship them? They say, "Oh no, get up, <laughs> get up!" <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm like you uh, in some ways. You know, I'm not I'm not God. Don't worship me. Get up. <laughs> uh, and and Jesus says, um, "You know, uh, uh, you believe because you have seen." That's what he says to Thomas. He doesn't say get up. He says, "You believe because you have seen." But there are those who have not seen, and blessed are them. He doesn't. He doesn't rebuke him. He, he says, "Yeah, you call me God." Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus says, "I and the I and the Father are one." Um, uh, John talks about there are three that testify in heaven: uh, the Word, uh, the 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 Father, and the Spirit. And these three are one. It says, so, "I mean, just all throughout Scripture, it, it says Jesus is God." Um, and, and so I don't know how anybody could mistake that. I, well, I do. There's kind of a delusion in uh, today's culture that says, you know, uh, uh, well, Jesus never called himself God. And it, I mean, you'll see <laughs> all throughout Scripture. It's incredible. Uh, anyway, those are just some examples. That was just off the top of my head. If we really got into Scripture, you would see, I mean, just all over the place. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm God. You know, I'm the king of Israel. Uh, even even on the on the cross. Uh, um, the, 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 the top part, the, and if you see this in Catholic crosses, you'll see the INRI, I, I -N -R -I, uh, the, the inscription on the top of the cross, where Pilate uh, wrote the inscription. Um, so uh, in, in, uh, he's, it says, uh, I believe, it says uh, he wrote it in Aramaic, uh, Greek, and Latin. And so uh, the Aramaic or the Hebrew would have uh, would have sounded something like this Yeshua HaNatsarai Melek HaYahudim and uh, that that means Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews and and the Jews saw that the Jews the Jews saw that and they're like don't, don't say that you know Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews say that he said he was the king of the Jews um, and and you'll see on that inscription if you take the first letter of each of that Yeshua so that's a Yod Hanatsarai, that's a hey. Vamelik, that's king. And that starts with a, uh, a vav. And then uh, ha Yahudim of the Jews. So uh, that's that's a hey also. So you get first letter of each, yod hey vav hey. It's incredible. It's incredible. That that is that is the tetragrammaton. That's that's the um, Old Testament name for God. That is God's name. In, in the Old Testament, uh, Yahweh. And so the Jews were like, no, don't write that. <laughs> and Pilate's like, what I've written, I've written. <laughs> uh, it's incredible. Anyway, uh, so uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, so uh, verse 13, I am writing to you fathers because you know him who has been from the beginning. There's, there's so much here, so much here and so, so little of time. So I, I'm writing to you fathers because you, you know him who is from the beginning. So the fathers, I, I think what he's talking about here, and people get really uh, confused about this too. Fathers, he's talking about the, uh, the, the Jews. I mean, the, the, this tradition would have been passed down for generations, generations. And you can see that in, uh, I think, one of the earliest transcripts we had of the complete Bible in uh, Hebrew Bible. Uh, I think, you know, it was kind of, uh, uh, we thought it was uh, from, you know, 14, 1500s. And we're like, well, you know, 1,500 years after his death, I, I, how, how accurate is this? How much can we trust this? And people were just all, you know, like <laughs> people who hated the Bible, like, yeah, this is great. Like, we've only got it, uh, you know, from about 500 years ago. 
and then we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? Uh, so very, very old, very old manuscripts. Uh, you know, around the time of, of uh, Jesus, these um, scribes were writing these things, transcribed, I think, from older, older um, manuscripts. And so we have that, and it lines up uh, just perfectly with what we had in the first place. So uh, pretty incredible. Um, so he's, yeah, I'm, I'm writing to you fathers. It, he's not talking about somebody's dad or something. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's saying, you know, uh, fathers, uh, the, the people who would have had this tradition anyway. Um, so uh, I'm writing because uh, you know him, who has been from the beginning. Uh, so again, they would have known God. They know, they know God. Uh, they would have known of him. They, they have that tradition. They know who Yahweh is. Uh, I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Uh, so young men, uh, I'm a young man, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm uh, kind of, a, like I said earlier, a, a boy in the faith. Um, and so you know how difficult it can be to overcome the evil one. He's writing to them because they, you know, uh, they've, they've got a lot of trials and temptations in their body and outside of the body. Um, you, you know what I'm talking about if... if uh, you're a Christian in today's culture, um, it, you can have a little taste of that. In that, in that culture, you would die. Um, you would die if, if you uh, uh, claimed Christ and, uh, and lived that way. Um, and uh, there, there were so many temptations, so many. I mean, the, 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 the Roman Empire was about hair and and muscle and, and, and beauty, and, and there was a lot of immorality. Lots of it, and if you lived like a Christian, the evil one was roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking of whom he may devour. So intense. Um, but he's writing to them. Uh, I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. Ooh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> children. So again, it's that it's that concept of uh, uh, newly being born again. So he's writing to he's writing to all types here. Uh, I have written to you fathers because you know him who has been from the beginning. So he re reiterates, I have written to you young men because you are strong, and the word of God remains in you. So how did they overcome the evil one? The word of God remained in them. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. What a what an amazing thing. Uh, oh, to serve God at a young age. It's an amazing thing. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not easy to do. Um, in, in today's culture, you, you're inundated with uh, sex and uh, money and uh, this false idea of who you are and who you ought to be, and it leads to nothing. And, I, and it's, oof, man, um, young men, because you're strong. What an amazing thing. Uh, not not to conform to the world as a young man, um, but to lead your family right. To, to uh, it's incredible. If only. He says, and you have overcome the evil one. I might not be able to get to all of this. It's uh, uh it's gonna be a long video. So let's let's end it there. We'll pick up on uh, fifteen. At a later time, uh, I think I'm just, if we get close to an hour, I'm just going to end it uh, so we don't go too far over. I love you guys. If you stuck around for this, thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to get kind of the, 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 the again, I'm not the arbitrator or arbiter of truth, uh, but I think it's important to get a, kind of a fuller picture, maybe even some clarity going to different sources it's like you go to a doctor you don't just go to one if you have a critical ailment and we all do we all we, i mean we're all under sin um and so you get a, you get different opinions and uh going to the word of god if if uh, in, in your life if uh if you're especially if you're a christian um and uh you go to people and they're not pulling out the word of god um go to somebody else and uh you know, or, or get their opinion. I mean, if you if you love them and, and their family member, you know, get their opinion, get opinions from different people. But um, this is going to be the truth. This is what's going to help. Um, you know, he, Jesus is the great physician. Um, he, he he helps. I mean, he's he's the one. Uh, he's he's the only one that has anything. Uh, um, you know, 
relevant, tangible, uh, helpful, um, encouraging to, and convicting to talk about. And so, you know, if uh, if I if I went to a doctor and they're like, oh, you're no, you're great, everything's great. Um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're oh, you're just you're fantastic. This is great. And then I die of cancer, and he never told me what my ailment was or or, or how to fix it. Um, it, he'd be a, a terrible monster. So, uh, so <laughs> that's kind of what we're talking about here. And John, I think that's John's point and purpose. So, uh, well, not his point and purpose, but I, I, I think that that's kind of along the lines of what he's writing in this epistle. Let me put it that way. So, all right. I love you guys. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, I don't know, stay strong. Uh, fight the good fight of faith, especially you young men. <laughs> I got overcome there just uh, a minute ago, so I, I think that's important. That may be something the Holy Spirit has convicted me about, but uh, all right, cool. Love you guys.